Okay, everybody, let's get started. Today we have Eugene going to tell us about some really cool looking stuff. And uh, thanks for coming. Thanks, Rich. Hey, before we start, just to clarify, how many people here know what MDPs are? Okay, great. I just needed to check. Uh, I won't do very much background, aka no background. Uh, how many of you have used MDPs before in your testing? Okay, few. How many have used it recently in your research? Okay, that's great. All right, let's jump to the presentation. Right. And present. Awesome. So, MDPs are often used for testing algorithms for a variety of reasons. They can be small and they're quick to solve. You can add diversity to test suites, so the algorithms that perform well, they, you can be seen as more uh, robust in these diverse environments. And you can also introduce characteristics of interest in generating your MDP. So as an example, um, there's a generator called Garnet that was done here. And in that particular generator, you could introduce non-stationary rewards. Some reasons why they're not as used, used as often or as widely adopted, debugging is not as intuitive and some characteristics are not often visualized. So if you wanted to debug your algorithm or your agent on MDP, you'd have to look at the matrices. There's not very many natural ways to, to look at them now, uh, as opposed to when you compare them against um, classical environments like mountain car. You can see that the car is not going the right way. You know that something's wrong. Um, and another reason is that code is usually custom. Even when there are generators that are put out there, not everybody uses it. They often run their own implementation. And then finally, reproducing the results for benchmarking tends to be challenging uh, just because there are so many different implementations. Uh, you can't get the environment exactly the, way, the, the same way, so trying to get the results is more difficult. The good news is, this is I have like four slides. This is the big slide. The rest of it is just me going around this, showing you this tool. Oop. Escape, great. Awesome. So, oh, before I even start, how many of you have checked out the toy example in the URL? And the, there's, no, no? Yes, one person? Awesome. Uh, and I guess I need to ask the other one. What toy example? Um, the toy example was uh, basically it was in the description of the, the text itself for this talk. Um, but in it, how many of you are familiar with CodePen? Yeah, a few people. Basically, it's this site on, uh, on CodePen is a site where you can write JavaScript and it immediately update, updates it. And that version, I'll show you later when we have time, allows you to just play with the parameters and then you'll output MDPs. In the same way you'll see here, this one's a little bit more detailed because there's a full playground, which is what I call this thing. So let's start. Um, so one of the challenges is trying to visualize MDP. So I'm gonna actually try and visualize an MDP. And by that, all I'm doing is I'm providing matrices. These are two matrices, maybe a third, a third one, a property. I have a state action state probability matrix. I have a state action state reward matrix. And then finally, at the bottom, I have terminal states. So in this case, it's three. You look at this, there is one, two, three, four states. There are two actions for each state and four possible uh, transition outcomes. Oh, sorry. Uh, anyways, I'm going to add this, and and you can do this with your own MDP, right? Just add the matrix in. I hit add, and there you go. That's what your MDP looks like, which is I think kind of neat. And you get to do a few things like drag it around, just play with it. <laughs> it's a little bit fun. I like doing that. Probably get it. You know what? Yeah, there you go. To its original state, or maybe. 
I can refresh it. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so you can look at it. I can put my mouse over um, state one. And state one shows that I will transition to these other states as possibly. But the question is, what transition probabilities are there? Like, is it 100% this way or 5% this way? So what I can do is I can hit this like palette or paint thing, and now I get to see it. So I, there's a few colors. I'm going to click on the legend so we can go through them. Let's focus maybe first on the, the circles, which are just showing state values. These, these state values are derived using value, value iteration because I know all the probabilities um, in the MDP. I can derive this, uh, find out what the optimal policy is, and then I can showcase the state values. In this case, pure red is basically the maximum within the MDP. If I mouse over, it says the value is one. Uh, white is typically just zero. Something that's pink is in between. And then, in this case, terminal state is three. Um, if I look at the links from the state to action, there's a green line and an, and an orange line the green line basically shows what the optimal, pol uh, optimal action is going to be. So we can identify within this MDP what the optimal path is going to be. And then um, the action to state lines, there's two colors. Red means there's a reward associated with it. Blue means that it's, uh, it's just showing you there's no reward. And then the thickness of the line shows the transition probability. So in this case, state one, uh, sorry, actually, let's go back to state one. State one, if you take action zero, has 100% probability of going to state two. Optimal action, uh, the optimal action here, uh, there's a 50% probability going here and 50% probability going there. Okay, follow so far? Awesome. Um, now, just to show that it's not really a trick. Let's play with this a little bit. I'm going to say that looks neat, but I'm going to change the value here. So in this case, I want state one to, um, okay. I'm gonna change this state one to go to, uh, sorry, zero one, state one to go to state two. And I'm gonna reduce this from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. Uh, I'm going to hit add, which I just clicked on, and you don't see it. But now, that MDP has changed. Well, I've added a new one, and now you can see that change. So the state value has is now lower, and you can see the additional e transition probability. Sorry, go ahead. Go back to that other display. I, I, I feel I can almost understand it. But I, Wait, I go ahead. Yeah. This one? What are those four numbers, the, the two sets of four numbers? What are they doing? The two sets of former numbers. This one? That's the first set of four numbers. Okay. So um, this is just the state to action to state. So this first set of four numbers is the transition probabilities for action zero, and then the transition probability for action one. And there's four numbers because there are four states in the whole thing. That's right. Sorry, I should have explained that, but yes. So those four, the four numbers in each. Row have to always add up to one. They should always add up to one, yes. Oh, um, just it might be a little bit more convenient if you actually just normalize them internally. Like you could just give weights, like positive weights, and then just normalize them. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've done things like this where it's been tedious to like try and add up all the. Uh, oh, right. Sure I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. One all the time. A lot of times it's just easy just to, to set things positive. And Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, you now see. So with this tool, you can just show your MDPs. You can see what your MDPs look like. You can also check out the values. If, let's say, I wanted to come back, I wanted to save this, I wanted to see what this looks like later, I can hit save, and then I'll save it as a set. Unfortunately, it's really small at the bottom here. Um, I'm going to refresh this page uh, like this. And I have some defaults here. I'm going to delete them. But just to show that the load works, I hit this load button. I look at the, the last set that I just 
um, saved and now it's back here and then I can go check um, these bottom row stuff basically just show the apply to all sort of uh, all the MDPs that you see so if I hit values then I'll see the MDPs right away instead of just clicking on one on them one by one um, so right so if you don't use anything else from Playground and you're curious about how your MDP looks like, just put it in this and then you'll show you and you'll be able to find some interesting patterns, which is a good segue for the next part. Um, so I was trying to create a version of the Garnet uh, generator and I decided, oh, okay, I'm just gonna put it in and I wanna see some diversity. Basically, I wanna see how these MDPs look like. But what I ended up doing, I realized, is, did anyone notice that when I hit the second part? Look at that. That thing is right there by itself. That state is not reachable by any other state, which means I coded it wrong, which is fine, but now I know, and I can go back and check it out. Another way you can actually use this beyond just looking for some perhaps obvious errors is when I hit look at the values, uh, you notice they're all white here. There's no reward because um, in this example, um, I put all the rewards to come to transitioning to the last state, which is stage six. Go ahead. There seem to be some actions that don't have any next states. Some, some actions that are just loose. Like this one right here? Yeah. So this one is something that I want to do a better job for later, but that's actually a line going out, trying to go somewhere else. But then you see this blue line here, this blue thick line, it's basically looping back to itself. So if I were to visualize this a little bit better, I would do the normal arrow and loop, but MVP, minimum viable product, so that's what I ended up with. So, but yeah, um, so that's, uh, that's one way that like, even just when I was building this out, I got to see how you could use this and just, oh no, things are wrong and why are they wrong? Okay. Um, Right, now I'm gonna go and show um, random walk, which I think is a little bit more un uh, familiar with most of you here. I'm gonna add just one random walk, five states. Uh, again, this is me not <laughs> having drawn it the usual way most people will see it or know it. If you're curious, this is just gravity here that's going on and showing, uh, and forces, right? Forces between the different charges. That's how this is getting drawn. But um, just to make sure this is normal MDP that you, a uh, normal random walk MDP that you're familiar with, please go right and then just to be a little bit more clear with that to get to the best outcome, uh, action one. So all these, action one is the optimal uh, action to be taking. And um, I'm going to do the benchmark test part here. So I'm gonna, there is Python code right, currently running it's not connect, It's connected through the web client, but it's not to the server. Long and short of this, this is normal Python RL agent that's been written and it's running. So if I hit run step right here, then that agent is actually making these actions for me. I should ex uh, explain, the green in the middle is where the uh, start of the episode is gonna be. Uh, and I hit, I basically click on run step and the agent tries to identify where to go. Now, you might have noticed that it went all the way to the right, which meant that it got a reward. I'm gonna hit run set one more time. Right there, this red thing is a Q value. So now I can see that after having the next step, it got the reward um, that that was a successful thing. I'm gonna hit right. In this case, I'm happy it kept going right. So now I get to see another Q, Q value. Hopefully this goes left this time. Oh no, nope, it went right. So. But there you go, right? Like, I don't know. I just had, had, had a lot of fun with this. Being able to see the Q value and being able to know that my RL agent is actually doing what I expected to was really neat. So that's a pretty trivial example. Um, so I'm gonna remove this one. i go back here, remove it. And I'm gonna add something a little bit more complex. Not that much more, but I'll add five of these. 10 state. And again, this is more me drawing. Uh, go, just want the two. Okay, awesome. 
Now I'm going to run the test again. I'm going to hit run step. And what you'll notice is that the agent seems to have taken different steps for each one of these. What's happening in the background is that the agent that you've written is being instantiated. So there's an agent attached to each one of these MDPs, and they're all taking separate actions. So I'm going to run, 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 click, click, click. And you'll notice that, hey, in this case, uh, the agent managed to get to the end. There's a little bit of a Q value there. Uh, and then I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm going to hit run 20 steps, run 20 steps. I guess maybe it's better to do here. Um, but in this case here, I think this one essentially is all the way there. So all the subsequent steps I have there will just lead me to the, the correct path. But one way to also look at this is to just look at the rewards or, or the return. So now I'm able to see that in this case, you know, this one seems to establish like the correct path. It's getting the right way. Whereas these other ones at a return of one means that it's hit the reward one time and it's gone out the right way, the other one, but not quite caught up. And what I can do is I can run an additional 20 steps. I'll run 50 steps, right? And basically this agent has now run through I don't know, like 700 steps for all of these separate MDPs. I think returns. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Cumulative return. It is a cumulative return, yes. Okay, so um, now I mentioned from the earlier part that this is all about, like, we want to be able to add um, more diversity to these tests to help to encourage more. Um, testing of algorithms against more diverse environments so that you could say that it's a little bit more robust. So uh, I am going to go back here, um, reset the experiment, Let's close all my charts, and then I'm going to add the one that we were looking at originally. I think you can really only add one, but I'll add one. Um, so that's one thing that I can test against. I'm going to try and add the Garnett one. Now, previously, what I didn't show you, and I'll show you right now, I guess. When I was doing this default set, you saw that the states were going in the wrong places. And um, actually, I'll just do it right now. Like, that happens. So we don't want that to happen. But even more so, if I hit refresh, uh, regenerate, the parameters are all available here. So you can see what was used to generate that gen what is being used by that generator to create the MDPs? But you can hit refresh or regenerate, and it'll just keep generating different uh, versions. But you can see there's a whole bunch of errors in this one. And actually, even when there aren't that many errors, what I've noticed is there isn't very much that, like, I get a whole bunch of uh, situations where the value, the state value is zero for a number of these MDP, a uh, number of these states. So, I figured that's not really worth testing. I'm going to go with something a little bit more complex. Let's say 20 states. I'll say there are three actions, branch of factor of two. I'm going to have five of them. And you get this massive thing. Uh, if I hit values, I get to see, OK, there's color all throughout. So there's it can reach one another. And there's uh, definitely some diversity, even in just the state values. Um, I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to test against all of these. So I'm going to run the same thing. I'm going to run 20 steps. And actually, this is kind of neat. One more, I guess. Like, these are obviously more complex. But I, I thought it was quite interesting. Like, these Q values that pop up, it's almost like constellations and stars and colors coming up. So you get to, like, you get to see that the agent is actually finding its way around here. Um, and if I go back to this, I hit the charts again, you get to see these patterns, basically this return, and how the reward is getting accumulated, how the agent is performing. Um, it's a little bit harder to see, because like right now, I've all scaled it to max, which this is just four, but the other ones above are 27. Um, and then just keep running. And so, just to be clear, all I had to do, if I wasn't building the site, of course, um, is write an RL agent, a simple one, connected to this through a single Python script. And all this is done, right? You can generate MDPs. You can see how they perform. And just to be able to re reproduce it a little bit better, I can hit Save. 
Um, I'm gonna refresh this page again and delete everything else there. Um, and go back here. Right. Oops. Sorry. Just okay. Um, so I, I said I showed that you could just simply just the uh, load it by selecting the file. But one thing that I like doing a lot more than that, just loading files like that, is I just like to drag it in. So just drag it in, and then you'll see that that's back there, right? Um, and I'm going to even go to benchmarking. The results have been saved, and if you want to look at the charts, they've been saved as well. So you could reproduce, try these, uh, load these uh, values back in. Um, that's that part. And then the final parts here are, this, right? So yeah, um, there's no special thing here. The tool, I think it helps with allowing for people to test with more diverse MDPs. It helps with visualizing allowing you to visually debug your MDPs and your agents. Um, the generator, you don't have to worry about using custom code, it's all done, uh, and that you can, re you can save and load it easily. Next steps, really, I'd love to get feedback. Um, and then I'd, I'd be happy to work with someone who's actually actively doing research with MDPs so that I can tailor it to your use case a little bit better. Um, and some of the possible next ideas I had were, um, I really like the idea of having a generator, showing it in its like form and seeing what examples come out of a single generator and different parameters. Benchmarking, Python interface code, making it have arrows as opposed to the lines. That's it. <laughs> oh wait, I had to, I had to like grab this. So. What's the name of your tool? You should have a name for it. Right, right now I'm calling it, uh, you can go to it, actually, you, this works on your phone. Uh, so if you go to mdp.ai slash playground, don't use it portrait, use it like landscape, and it'll work, or it worked on my phone, so <laughs> I admittedly, no, my phone was like three years old, and so yeah, it works on the, an older phone too. Smartphone though, right? <laughs> don't like run some sort of I don't know opera on it I did try and using this on edge and it worked on edge too so I thought like hey if I covered edge I'm good <laughs> um, but yeah so mdp.ai is the name of the uh, tool go ahead Presenting this as a way to better understand the algorithms and the MPPs that yeah. are generated by some process. Um, are you able to compare the performance of two algorithms running on the same MPP side by side? Not right now, but I think that should be easily doable, but I just need to code it in, right? So admittedly, what I've been doing recently has been just to get it to have a cleaner interface to make it really easy to understand for people to use it and play around with it. So I haven't spent that much time on that, but that seems like a natural next thing. Because the thing that was frustrating to me was I saw the charts and I actually do have uh, a random agent, which does nothing, but uh, well, picks random actions, but I was hoping to compare and see both side by side. So that's a good idea. I think that's definitely gonna be the next step for this. Right. Is that possible? I, I'm not sure in what context you mean by that. I mean, if you have an agent that's running and it's taking an action, you could see it, let's say, as an example, right? It's not performing well because it's running between these five states and never escaping. So you could at least see that it's happening in this case, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry. Right. So like an adversarial generator? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't do it now. And like, I mean, like, maybe it could at some point, but I don't 
I don't think that was immediately what I was thinking of when I was looking at this, but we can talk more again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes and no. So, unfortunately, if you're talking about really random ones and they have a lot, the, the branching factor is high, I don't know if there is. Because right now, the algorithm or just the visualization part is using kind of forces to try and get a good idea, but I don't think so. The one thing that you could do, which doesn't quite cover that point, um, is you can I'm gonna reset experiment and we all like you I, I was thinking about this a little bit and you could actually just um, create some like mathematical constraints for some MDP so random walk is a very clear simple example uh, another one would be tree branching right like you could actually show that in an MDP and it'd be like in the right places Mm -hmm. And then do find the minimal edge crossing or something like that um, as you get higher in states. So that's going to be that's that's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And you can even have like a toggle. It's like, do you want to use forces or do you want to use yeah. this other algorithm? That makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. Keep that in mind. Uh, is that possible to do some uh, post mission? <laughs> no, not right now. Uh, it's something that I, I've talked a little bit with Adam, but needed to get to this step first, and then I think we'll we'll keep talking. Um, do you have ways for people to build them? So, like the visualization might be improved in various ways, and often when you're doing research, you want to customize the visualization in various ways so that it's actually pertinent to the precise research topic that you're doing. Mm -hmm. right, so you might want to highlight some attributes of the MDP. Uh, remove some others, right? So that your display becomes less cluttered. Yeah. Is there a way that people can contribute to this project, or like pull it in and out? I am fully intending for this to be on GitHub. The only reason why it's not on there is because I am embarrassed of my code right now. <laughs> uh, but in short, I've built it or structured it in that way. The visualization, unfortunately, is the one that's probably the least configurable right now. But for instance, adding a generator, you could take a template that I've created, and it just shows you the basic necessities of everything you need to put. So you could generate your own generator. Um, but I'd like to do the same thing for the visualization part. I haven't gone to that yet. But Uh, again, not right now, but it's, I mean, like, it is on, I think I have it a bit bucket right now. So it's easy enough to transition it over after I maybe add some comments everywhere. <laughs> but yes. No, I, I, I mean, like, I really do mean this. Like, I mean for this to be something to be open and people can contribute because I think there's a need and I'd like to get other people's opinions on how they could do things a little bit better. Um, and also, like you were saying, I think I've coded this in, there's some limit, like some things I coded it because I wanted it to be quick for now. So again, that idea that I have a terminal state, but right now the default is the last state. That's not really what you want to see. Or even the rewards, you might want to have negative rewards. Right now I'm just using positive one, well, I'm just using positive some value right now. But it should be easy enough to just make that more generic. It just means that there's more drop downs and options, so I'm trying to balance the usability of it too. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>